Hey, Miss Roberts here for day five of Night of the Ninjas, our last day for us to wrap up this story. We have been working on our three skills that the Ninja Master taught us. I believe they were B nature, or was that the third one? That was the second one. The first one was, no, the last one was, there, there. Sorry, this is why you shouldn't guess. You should always look it up or make sure you know it. So now I know it. It is use nature, be nature, and follow nature. And those are the tricks they use to go back to the treehouse. So now we are on chapter nine, which is called the mouse walk. Because remember, they were trying to get across the river and Jack had just fallen in trying to get out there. And so now they are following the mouse across the tree, which I should call her by her name, Peanut. Okay, chapter nine, Mouse Walk. The mouse vanished into the tall grass on the other side of the stream. Jack and Annie stared at the tree branch. We have to try to cross it, said Annie. We're supposed to follow nature. Forget it, said Jack. It's too little. It'll crack in a second. Maybe if we pretend we're mice, we can do it, said Annie. Oh, brother, said Jack. Not again. If you could be a rock, you can be a mouse, said Annie. Just be tiny and light and fast. I'm sorry about that. That's my doorbell. But it's just my husband walking by it, so don't worry about it. Jack took a deep breath. We have to, said Annie. Okay, Jack said. Say squeak, said Annie. You're nuts, said Jack. Just do it, said Annie. It'll help you feel more like a mouse. Jack groaned. Okay, he said. Squeak. Squeak, said Annie. Squeak, 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 they said together. Let's go. Hurry, said Annie. Jack stepped under the branch. I'm teeny, I'm light, I'm fast, he thought. Then he darted across the branch. Jack moved so quickly he didn't think about anything except getting to the other side. He forgot the wild, freezing water. He forgot the smallness of the branch. Suddenly, Jack was on the other side. Suddenly, Annie was right beside him. They did it. They laughed and fell together onto the grass. See, see, the branch didn't break, said Annie. I guess it was big enough, said Jack. I guess we just had to think the right way. The peanut way, said Annie. Yeah, said Jack, smiling. He felt great. He was still wet from his fall into the stream, but he didn't mind it anymore. Jack pushed his glasses into place and stood up. Okay, now we just had to find the treehouse, he said. No, we don't, said Annie. She pointed up. The treehouse was outlined against the moonlit sky, high in the tree, surrounded by white flowers. In the distance came the sound of voices. Then Jack saw flames. The samurai are coming back, said Jack. We have to go. Where's Peanut, said Annie. <laughs> Where's Peanut, said Annie. We can't leave Peanut. We have to go, said Jack. The voices of the samurai were getting closer. So were their torches. Come on, Jack said. He grabbed Annie's hand and pulled her towards the rope ladder. Oh, Jack, she said sadly. Go, go. Annie stared at the rope ladder. Jack followed. He felt, oh, sorry, she started up the rope ladder. Jack followed. He felt sad, too. He liked the little mouse now. He liked it a lot. They climbed up and up. Just before they got to the top, Jack heard it. Squeak. Oh, wow, cried Annie. Peanuts inside. Annie pulled herself into the treehouse. Jack followed. He gasped. Someone else was in the treehouse, too. Oh, no. A dark figure was sitting in the corner. You have done well, the figure said. It was the master ninja. You have followed the way of the ninja, he said. Oh, man, breathed Jack. Squeak! The master was holding Peanut. Take good, good care of your little helper, he said, handing the mouse to Annie. Annie kissed the mouse's tiny head. And take this, said the master. He held out his hand to Jack. He gave Jack a small, round stone. This moonstone will help you find your missing friend, the master said. Jack stared at the stone. Was that one of the four things? You must go now, said the master. He picked up the Pennsylvania book and handed it to Annie. Where did you find it, asked Jack. Here, said the master. You did not see it before because your heart knew you had a mission to complete first. What about you, said Annie? Can you come with us? Yes, said Jack. We need help finding Morgan. 
The master smiled. No, my friends. I must stay here. There will be more helping along the way, but you must find the way on your own. Annie opened the book. She found the picture of Frog Creek. She pointed to it. I wish we could go there, she said. The wind started to blow. The white flowers started to shake. Clouds covered the moon. Remember, the master said, keep a kind heart. Then he swung silently down the rope ladder. He disappeared into the dark night. Wait, Jack called. There was so much he wanted to ask the master about nature, about ninjas, about their mission. But the treehouse started to spin. It spun faster and faster. Jack gripped the stone in his hands. He squeezed his eyes shut. And then everything was still. Absolutely still. Chapter 10. Night, Peanut. Jack opened his eyes. Then he opened, then he opened his fist. He stared at the moonstone in his hand. It was clear and smooth. It almost seemed to glow. We're home, said Annie. Squeak. Annie and the mouse were looking out the window. Jack looked with them. The sun was setting in the distance. No time at all had passed in Frog Creek. They heard their neighbor dog, Henry, bark. They heard the crickets chirping. In the distance, they could see their dad stepping out of their house. He stood on the porch. Jack! Annie! He called. Time for dinner. Coming! Shouted Annie. Jack sat back on his heels. He looked at the moonstone again. I guess we have one of our four things, he said. We'll look for the other three tomorrow, Annie said. Jack nodded. They had a lot more work to do. He put the moonstone in his pocket. He pulled on his pack. Ready, he said. Wait, said Annie. She took off one of her sneakers. She pulled off her sock. Then she put the sneaker back on. What are you doing, said Jack. I am making a bed, she said. A what? A bed, you know. Or a peanut to sleep in. Annie picked up the mouse. She tucked it, tucked, she tucked it in her inside her sock. Night, peanut, she said softly. Squeak. Oh, brother, said Jack. Annie held the mouse close to Jack. Kiss it good night, Jack, she said. Don't be silly, he said. Let's go. Thanks for helping us, Annie said to the mouse. She put Peanut gently down on the glowing M. She pulled Morgan's message out of her pouch, then put it next to the mouse. See you tomorrow, she said. Then she star started down the ladder. Jack stared at the mouse. It looked back at him. For a moment, its dark eyes looked oddly odd, old and wise. Come on, Jack, called Annie. Jack kissed its tiny head. Night, night, Peanut, he whispered. Then Jack headed down the rope ladder. It got darker and darker as he went down. By the time he stepped onto the ground, it was almost completely black. Where are you, said Jack. Here, said Annie. Her hand bumped his. He took it. Careful, he said. Careful yourself, she said. Together they took off through the cool, dark woods. They moved silently and swiftly, two shadow warriors returning home. I like that one. It was a really nice ending. And I really, really liked what the master said. He said, Keep a kind heart, which is so perfect for the message that, um, for the theme of this week's choice board for media and steam. We wanted you to think of kindness and the ninja said, keep a kind heart to Jack and Annie. It was perfect. I love it when a book ends like that. It just makes you feel good. It's a good, happy ending. It just makes everything feel right in the world. And then on Monday, we begin our next adventure. Afternoon on the Amazon. Which we had to say a special thanks to Miss Becker for these books that we are starting now. Because I had the first five, but I had to borrow these ones from the library. So, let's see what we're in for next week. Vampire bats and killer ants? That's what Jack and Annie are about to run into when the magic treehouse whisks them away to the Amazon River. It's not long before they get hopelessly lost. Will they be able to find their way back to the treehouse? Or are Jack and Annie stuck forever in the rainforest? Oh, no. But it should. Oh, and look at Morgan's. Th Not Morgan. The mouse. Peanut is right in her pocket. So we know he's going to go on this voyage with us. Can't wait to read again with you next week. I will see you all on Monday. I hope you enjoy this weekend. And I also secretly hope that the weatherman is wrong and it gets warmer because I'm about to go run in this and it's cold. I don't want to. <laughs> I want it to be warmer. So. 
Fingers crossed it gets warmer and we get to enjoy some beautiful weather next week. I hope you have a good day and a wonderful weekend. Bye.